Okay, in a minute, I am gonna hop off camera so that you guys can really focus on the content. But right now, I just wanted to welcome you. I'm so excited for today's uh, masterclass. And um, can you hear me? Just tell me in the comments, yes, if you can hear me. I'm using this microphone. I usually use a different one. I just wanna make sure, okay, yes, that's great, fantastic, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> I'm excited to have you here because we are going to talk about consultations. Woo and how you can use these consultations as your first big step in your process to bring and onboard those new clients into turning them into full paying clients. I'm gonna show you how you can overcome your jitters, how you can run every consultation like a pro, and how you can sign on those full paying clients. So let's dive in. I'm going to now hop off camera so that I am not distracting. And here we go. So I'm going to show you how to price, execute, and close a consultation with ease so that you can start securing those awesome, well-paying clients you deserve. You're going to leave here today ready to master the start of any design project with confidence. And if you stay until the end of today's training and decide to continue learning with me, I will give you the opportunity to get your hands on a special bonus just for you. So stay with me to the end. Before we get started, if you have anything else open on your desktop, I want to encourage you to close it down. Close Facebook, don't check Instagram, unless of course you're, you know, you want to share a screenshot of our time together on social, I'll always welcome that. But honestly, put your phone away, let this time be for you. <clears throat> We're going to cover a lot of material, really a lot of material in a short time. Everyone who attended the previous masterclass said that it was so jam packed with value. So I want to make sure you don't miss a single second of it. Okay. <clears throat> because I just like to dive right in and cut straight to the chase, get your pens and paper, pen and paper out. Uh, I want to dive right in. So in my opinion, too many designers offer consultations for free. And I'm here to tell you to stop. But it can be hard to know what to charge. Do you simply charge an hourly rate? Do I charge more, maybe less? So I'm going to start today's masterclass by giving you a formula that will help you calculate what you can charge if you decide to charge for your consultation. So get your pen out and ready. But first, what is a consultation anyways? Because I know some of you are feeling that. Should I know already what it is? Someone tell me. So <clears throat> I want to tell you what it is and why you need it. Because some of you are looking for that clarity. And I often get asked questions like, what's a consultation? How is a consultation different from the start of a project? Or is it? How long is it? Is a consultation the same thing as a discovery call? A consultation is an in-person or virtual meeting at the client's home. It can be one to two hours in length, and it's your moment to shine and share your knowledge. It is not the same thing as a discovery call. A consultation is typically the next step after an initial phone call that I call a discovery call. So what's the purpose? The purpose of a consultation is to clarify the scope of work, to assess the project desirability, to showcase your value as a design professional, and it is to sell your services. So do a little screenshot of this slide if you need it. And then let's get into the chat. Do you currently offer a consultation to kickstart your design services? Type yes or no into the chat. I'm just gonna click over here. So oh, I'm gonna pull this chat out so I can see it all the time. Awesome. Okay, we've got a lot of yeses, which is amazing. Okay, so a lot of you already, you're like, I know what a consultation is, Rebecca. <laughs> amazing. That's fantastic. And if you are too nervous to say no, don't worry about it. I got you covered. We're going to show you how to do it. Okay. So why charge? Now that we know what it is, the big question I get is why should you charge for your consultations? Or why should I have to pay you before I know if I want to hire you? I firmly believe that a as a professional, you should charge for your time if you're giving professional advice. Your time is valuable and when you're at a consultation, that's time away from your paying clients. You could be billing for your time working on someone else's project. This is why you need to charge. 
Also, you appear more professional to a potential client, like a doctor or a lawyer or any freaking professional, I, honestly. When you charge for your consultation, it shows that you are a professional and your potential clients are more likely to value your time and your expertise. More on that in a second. So your time is valuable, you appear more professional, and you don't have to hold back your opinions or ideas. Oh, weight off shoulders. You don't have to hold back your opinions and ideas when you are at their house. You can offer all the advice you want without feeling restricted that you're giving away the goods for free because you're not. You're literally getting paid for your opinions. You no longer have to be at a client's house and try to decipher what information should I give them and what should I hold back? And then number four, you attract serious clients who can afford your services. This is a big one. You'll never feel like you've wasted your time with someone who can't afford your services or maybe doesn't see the value you offer when you've had them pay upfront for the consultation. When clients pay, they have skin in the game they're more likely to turn into full paying clients. You have to remember that you're running a business and not a hobby and design decor is a luxury service. Start charging for your consultations and you will immediately attract more qualified clients, which will fast track your success in converting clients during your consultation. When I asked inside my community what they charged for consultations, the answers ranged from $250 to $675. Uh, this is a little screen grab from Betty. Betty um, Simtikidis is a Power of Process alumni. And when I first met her, she was charging $0 for a consultation, also known as she was doing them for free. And now she charges $500. She has the confidence knowing that her business and process are set up to attract the right clients for full service design. She uses her working with us document that she mentions here to help give her confidence and close the sale. I'm going to share more about this document a little bit later. Type into the chat right now how much you're currently charging for a consultation. Don't be shy. When we share, we help each other. It could be $0. If it's free, type free. Type into the chat right now what you are charging for a consultation. As so many of you said you are charging. Okay, awesome. Thank you. We've got, what do we have here? We've got 525, 400, 397, 575, 500, 500, 550, 495 for two hours, 450, Tracy, $100, 350, Melissa, typically free. Thank you for your honesty, Melissa. I appreciate that. Uh, 300 pounds. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of money in Canadian dollars. If you are charging 300 great British pounds, love it. 495, 200, 795, 375, 150, 750 dollars. Holy smokes, guys. Do you see that chat? Do you hear those numbers? Like talk about a real range. Hopefully that makes you start to think, huh? Maybe I could charge a bit more. <laughs> Maybe you're still not convinced. <clears throat> Meet Ariella. Ariella is a Montreal designer who I met inside our Power of Process study hall sessions. She was adamant she could not charge for her consultations because that's just not what people did in Montreal. The other designers in her realm were not charging for consultations. She even had me rethinking this strategy a little. I was starting to wonder if maybe this is region dependent, but then not long after she completed the course, she admitted to me that she had actually started to charge for her consultations and it was the best decision she had ever made in her business. And in fact, when I was messaging with her literally a few days ago, while I was creating these slides for this training, she said that she now charges $375 for her consultations. I love her honesty. And she shares in this screenshot of our conversation that she was stuck in a mindset and she could see what others were doing, her counterparts in her field locally. So she was nervous to do something different and charge. But what's changed is that charging for a consult has weeded out non-ideal clients. Amazing. When you stop offering free consultations, you will start to immediately make more money in your business, leading to more profits. 
So let me ask you this question. What would you stop doing today if you knew your business would be profitable? Would it be you stop doing consultations? Maybe there's something else that you just don't enjoy doing. Okay, let's get back to calculating your fee. And thank you for everyone who's commenting in the chat. Um, I love, I love, I love that you guys are using that. So back to calculating your fee. How do you know how much to charge? I say at the bare minimum, I suggest you take your hourly rate, you multiply it by two and add 40%. Although I do recommend that you charge more than that, anywhere from 50 to 60% more. Because a design consultation is a one-off service, I think it should cost a little more than just two hours of your time. You have to consider travel there and back, and there's time put in afterwards, probably putting together a fee proposal. Over time, as you get used to charging, you can start raising your fees. So go ahead and make a decision. How much are you going to charge? And if you already charge, like for those of you who typed into the chat, how much are you going to raise your rates to? Type into the chat how much you're going to raise or charge. Ooh, Colleen, thank you for sharing that. I get stuck on making sure the consultation is valuable. That is a mindset hurdle because you offer more value than you give yourself credit for. And we're going to dive in a little bit more to that. Let's talk about why you're here today. You're in the right place if you're excited to begin charging for consultations or looking to increase how much you charge, meaning no more frustration after the fact when the client does not hire you for more work, you feel rightly compensated. You're in the right place if you're motivated to improve your sales skills and increase your conversions from simple leads to full service clients. Maybe you're motivated to close the sale at the end of almost every consultation. Or maybe you're intrigued by the idea of running a consultation with confidence and intention, sharing design advice confidently and feeling comfortable talking about money. So let's dive into the comments right now. What is it for you? Why did you show up today? Is it one, two, or three? Are you excited? Are you motivated? Are you intrigued? And Vera has created a poll for us. You can just click on the poll and answer it that way. Are you, what are you? Let me know. I'm seeing a ton of motivated to improve their sales skills. Yes, this is a strong group. Most of you are already charging for your consults, which is amazing. Um, fewer, few people doing intri say intrigued to run a consultation with confidence. Uh, and only one answered excited to start charging, which tells me this is a strong group who is ready to take it to the next level and talk about sales. Good. So no matter your motivation, I fully support you. You are in the right place today. We're going to review all the jazz. So for those who don't already know me, I'm Rebecca Hay. I started my interior design business while pregnant with my first child nine years ago. And I'm now the proud mom of two kids. That's Sarah and Joseph's my husband, Chris, uh, in our, on our vacation in Bahamas last year. And my first work on my own was behind the scenes on HGTV. That's where I learned about budgeting and the importance of a good reveal. After that, I quickly learned from trial and error and grew my revenue to seven figures in the first five years of business. Right before the pandemic hit, I decided I wanted to bring local designers together to meet up in person. And some of you were there, some of you in this, this chat I recognize, and that's how my designer meetups were born. I began to see truly how hungry our design community was to be in community and hungry for business knowledge. Since most of us, let's face it, are never taught how to run a business in design school. I know I never was. It uncovered a passion for teaching from within me. So now I spend my days as creative director of my residential design firm here in Toronto, but mostly I get to share the business knowledge I've gained in the process of growing my own firm with other emerging designers like you so that you can shortcut your learning curve and gain more entrepreneurial freedom. But for those first few years when I really just started my business and I was going it alone, it wasn't easy. Raise your hand in the chat if anyone is in the early years of your business early years, two, three, four years, or maybe you haven't even started your business yet. It was a lot of trial and error. Like it was a lot of it. 
and a lot of chaos ensued. I was always wishing I could find a better way. Great. I've got some hands up. Me two years in first year, Emily, Chelsea, hands up. Awesome. Oh, I wish I had this when I was just starting out. Amazing. When I was running my business after one or two years, I would start new, every new project like very chaotically. I didn't know what my next step was. I definitely did not charge for consultations. I didn't even know the term consultation. I was literally just showing up and doing a meet the person and find out about their project and maybe tell them my hourly rate. <laughs> I did not trust my God or value my expertise. I undercharged for my services like big time. I totally didn't estimate my hours accurately. Let's face it, I wasn't even tracking my hours properly. And all my clients wanted a freaking deal. I was constantly reinventing the wheel with every project. I made up my process on the spot. No two projects were ever run the same way. And then I had my lemon job where literally everything went wrong. And my clients sat me down at the end to express their displeasure with my chaotic process. Fortunately, that was then. Now, after a lot of deep work, a lot of coaching, and a lot of trial and error, I always charge for consultations. And my time is spent doing the things that I really know that I'm good at and I enjoy, like 90%. I say no truthfully to clients that don't fit our process and don't value our expertise. And we run every project, decorating, renovating, new build the same way. It's energizing and it lights me up. It is safe to say that when I started my business, I had no process. Every day felt overwhelming and chaotic. I was never charging more than maybe five or 6,000 in design fees. And how I even made ends meet with a young family is a total mystery. I was frequently in the red, which is an accounting term for spending more than I made, often knowing back taxes to the CRA, which is the Canadian version of the C of the IRS. It was no bueno. But now I can truthfully say that we have a solid process inside our business. We onboard our clients with ease in our consultations, our teams coordinated, we literally never feel like we're in chaos anymore. And we frequently charge 30K plus in design fees for the same type of project that I used to quote 5K for. Not even joking, this is a real number. And we're in the black, right? Which means we're now making a profit in our design business. Can you imagine what it would feel like if you only said yes to the projects that light you up while making the profits that you dream of? Using a consultation to kickstart your process. I wish I had bolded the word consultation in this slide <laughs> or capitalized it. But using a consultation to kickstart your process and convert leads to clients is truly the single most powerful and strategic way to eliminate chaos and increase your revenue. I'm going to show you how. So here's where we're going today. First, I'll share how I used to run consultations and what you want to avoid. Then I'll show you how to recognize signs that you're experiencing imposter syndrome and how you can eliminate it. Next, you're going to learn simple steps to communicate that you charge for consultations and the ways to confidently talk about money while you're there. We will look at how you can confidently present your services to your client inside a consultation and the simple steps you can take to close the sale. I know many of you mentioned you want to learn more about sales. This is your chance. And then if you love what you're learning here today and you'd love to work with me, I'll tell you how you can do that at the end. And then at the very end, I will do a live Q&A. So make sure you write down your questions because I'm here live now today and I will stay on to answer all and as many questions as I possibly can. Uh, so hang on till the end. So let's dive into number one, what to avoid doing at a consultation. Here's a recap of how I used to run consultations. I didn't charge for a consultation. I couldn't honestly imagine it because my previous boss, who I had worked under for five years, did them for free. In fact, he didn't even call it a consultation. He would just go over to a new lead's house and meet them. He was a, dealing with a different level and 30 years experience in the industry. I would show up when I started my own business with a notepad and scribbled as much as I could while I talked and tried to listen at the same time. You guys know that feeling. I struggled with coming up with ideas on the spot. I worried about the value I was providing. And I know Colleen, you talked about this. I'm also someone who needs time to process creative ideas. 
they don't just come to me on the spot. How many of you can relate to kickstarting a new project like this or running a consultation like this? Just type a yes in the comments. I think this is a pretty common um, 100, yes, a thousand percent. Yes, exactly. Okay, so here's what you need to avoid. Don't do what I did. Skip the chaos and the overwhelm. Here's what you need. One, skipping the consultation. You need to avoid skipping the consultation and going straight to sending a proposal. The consultation is meant to kickstart your project. It's where you get to know the client and make a fully educated decision on how much work it'll be in order to build a proposal. You can't skip that step. Two, avoid talking all the time and doing all the talking. I was so guilty of this. I felt like the more I talked, the more value I was adding. But truthfully, you want to learn about the client as much as they want to learn about you and, and what you can do to help them. So make sure you ask thoughtful, probing questions. Write them down in advance so you don't forget to ask them. Three, avoid showing up without a plan and simply winging it. You need a checklist that you bring with you every single time that you follow. Avoid not being prepared to talk about money. And this is a big one. This was always a big one for me. Don't wait until the consultation to have the first conversation about your fees and your pricing structure and project costs. That's what the discovery calls for. The discovery call will pre-qualify them. Talk about your pricing model. If you don't have one, take my course pricing with confidence. But you need to know your pricing before you get cornered in a consultation and you don't know how to answer. And then lastly, stop collecting payment after the consultation. So once you start charging for your consult, don't wait to collect the money at the client's house. Always collect the fees in advance. And I'm going to share you a little more on, I'm going to share how to do this in a little bit, but it's so, so important. So what about that fear, that feeling that we're not good enough if they don't hire us, right? So what if they still don't sign on with me after the consultation? What if I avoid all those things and do it right and they still don't hire me? I know some of you are thinking that. Here's the reality. Not every consultation will turn into a client. That's just the reality. That's why charging for your time is so key. When you charge for your consultations, you don't feel like you've wasted your time when a project doesn't move forward. You got paid for your time and you can move on to the next client. And actually, I want to stop here for a second and this is unscripted. I would love for you, because so many of you here today do charge for your consultations, I would love for you to type into the chat if you find that this has helped. Like, let me know when you leave a consultation, do you feel that you feel good because you've charged for it? Like, I would just love to hear, um, yes, yes. Karen says, yes. Amy, Amory says, yes. Amy says a hundred percent. Rubina says, yes. Chelsea says, yes. I don't feel taken advantage of Sarah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. 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 Proof is in the pudding for those who aren't charging. You can see it here firsthand. Okay, thing, this takes me to number two. Now, I always address mindset in any and all of my teachings because I believe our mind is a very powerful tool. It will either work for us or against us. So let's talk about overcoming imposter syndrome. So what is it? Imposter syndrome is a real thing, especially for creatives, and especially when it comes to showcasing our value and talking about money. The definition of imposter syndrome is, <clears throat> is a psychological occurrence in which people doubt their skills, talents, or accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as frauds. I know the definition sounds extreme, but it's called impost it's called a syndrome, sorry, it's called a syndrome because these fears are not based on reality or truth. You are an imposter if you pretend to be someone who you're not. But it's a syndrome when you lack confidence despite your skills and your talent. So how does it show up for us? It shows up by first giving away your time for free, not feeling like we can charge for our consultations because we haven't proven our value yet. Holding back your ideas because you're worried that you're giving away too much and they won't hire you. 
spoiler alert, the more you share, the more value you express to the client. If they share this much in the consultation, oh, imagine how much more they can help us. That's what your client is thinking. It shows up by not being prepared. In my experience, confidence comes from preparation. Have a checklist, come ready with a pitch deck and sales strategy so you don't need to make it up on the spot or defer answering a question to later. And then lastly, feeling like you're dumb for not having all the answers, like at the drop of a hat. For example, a client might ask you a question about electrical or code you can simply defer to the experts and say something like, we partner with skilled, um, I don't know, skilled licensed electricians who are experts in their field. Talk about the partners that you work with and remind them that you get the best information from those partners. You don't have to have the answers yourself. So how can you combat this? There are two major ways that you can change how you run things to get over imposter syndrome. First, follow a process. And second, don't go it alone. So let me walk you through each. These are the two simple strategies that I think can make a big difference. Have a set process you follow inside your consultation. Be prepared with your checklist and be ready to communicate next steps to your clients via your internal business process. Have a way of doing things. It backs you up. It gives you confidence. It will make you feel more competent. And then second, bring an assistant you pay just to take notes so that you look professional and are also able to be fully present. How many people here bring an assistant with them to a consultation? Say yes in the comments. This was something that I learned after I already had a team. I wish I had done this before I even started to grow my team. You don't have to wait until you have employees to do this. You simply pay the person for two to three hours of their time so that they could take the notes while you can be present with the client. I've got the real mixed bag of answers here. I have yes, I've got yes, I yes, I have, no, no, I don't, no. I really highly encourage you to consider this option. If you're charging for your fee, make sure your consultation fee will cover an assistant at two hours of their time and then what you need to make. Trust me, it is a game changer. It makes you look so much more professional. Okay, I want if I wanna run a consultation like a pro, do I need to be an expert in everything? And I kind of touched on this, but I just want to remind you, no, you do not need to be an expert in everything. Focus on your mindset, believe in your abilities and willingness to learn and take yourself and your business seriously. You just need to be the expert in your zone of genius and have the resources to solve the rest. Okay, let's dive into talking about money. Number three, talking about money though, with confidence. So. <laughs> You're probably thinking by now, okay, I get it, Rebecca. Uh, I know I should charge for, charge for a consultation and I kind of maybe have an idea how much I would charge or I'm already charging, but how do I get comfortable with talking about money? How do I get potential clients to understand and see the value of why it's a paid consultation, right? How do I get them to commit to paying the consultation fee in advance? So how do we talk about money with confidence? There are simple steps that you can take to set yourself up for success at a consultation. And the trick is that it starts long before the actual consultation at the client's house. You need to start by setting expectations and the talk about money and then talking about money early and often. This means talking about budget, design fees, project costs, all on a phone call or in a PDF or via email that you send to the client, there is no use avoiding the money talk until later. It will simply come back to bite you in the later. And you need a process and a strategy to communicate your pricing structure. This is really important. When it's on paper, 
it makes it a heck of a lot easier for you to then communicate it verbally to a client. So create an onboarding process that has key milestones to discuss money. When you follow a process, you have a guide and therefore your confidence will follow. And then you know what they say in marketing. If you confuse, you lose. If you struggle to understand how to calculate your own pricing, then chances are it will be difficult to communicate it to a client. This is how I always felt when I was charging hourly. Clients wanted to know how many hours it would take me. And I had no freaking clue. You need to get clear and confident with your pricing model and establish a pricing model that is easy to communicate. A great example of adopting a confident pricing model is Elizabeth Cinquini. Elizabeth is a New York designer who is now trans, translocated, <laughs> moved, <laughs> I don't know, to Southwest Florida. Um, but she'd been working for years in New York City charging hourly. She joined Power of Process back in early 2022 and immediately adjusted her pricing model to fit her new process. She met with a past client and was able to propose a design fee that was three times what she had charged him in the past, making it the most money she has ever charged for a design fee. When you have an easy to communicate design fee, it will make the hard conversations about money so much easier. Your process and your pricing structure give you the confidence. So what exactly is the process I follow to make money conversations at the consultation easier? I'm going to show you the exact one that I follow. The following touch points account for a portion of our onboarding process with new clients. Now, if you are multitasking, I really want you to come back to me here because this is going to be a massive takeaway. I want you to write this down, especially if you are not following a specific onboarding process. So having a process sets the tone for our professionalism. It shows clients this isn't our first rodeo and it makes talking about money so much easier. Use these communication touch points to alleviate the strain and stress of having to approach the money talk in person for the first time. So money conversation number one is at the initial intake. When a new lead inquires about your services, send a PDF that outlines your process and fee structure. At our studio, we send a PDF called Working with Rebecca Hay Designs. This is a picture right here on the slide. And it outlines our process, our consultation fee, and our general design fee structure. Remember that that Facebook post or that Facebook screen grab I showed you earlier from Betty and Takitas where she talks about sending a document? This is it. Your design fee structure should be discussed in advance of the consultation, or you're going to run the risk of an unhappy client who can't afford your fees, demanding a refund on your consultation, or just generally being disappointed. So you could also find out that their budget is unrealistic. Money combo number two, the discovery call. Every project should start with a 20 minute discovery call, book it with a new lead, share your rates, your typical project costs, etc. At our studio, when a new lead connects, we first send them our working with us document, the one I showed you, then we offer to book a discovery call. And the reason we do that in that order is we want to pre-qualify them. They need to understand that we follow a process. We're not just fly by night designer who's gonna meet you in a showroom. And this is what it's gonna cost more or less for our services. Because if they don't like our process or how we charge, there's no time, there's no point wasting our time in a call. And then I speak to them personally for 20 minutes. In this call, I share all of that information and what the fee is for the consultation. Then touch point number three, the money conversation number three is send the consultation invoice once the client has confirmed a date or time for the consultation. So we send the invoice once a client has booked their date and we've sent them a link to book or we've just booked it through, uh, through email or the phone. And we request payment 48 hours before the consultation. We also send them a PDF on what they can expect to get out of the consultation, which is the what to expect document that you see here on this slide so that everyone is on the same page. And then lastly, money conversation number four, or touch point number four is at the actual consultation. 
we walk them through our process and design fee structure using a consultation pitch deck that we created in Canva. This was something I introduced a couple years ago. Whoo, game changer. It is a whole lot easier <laughs> to visually show someone how you work and how you do your fees when you don't have to rely on your memory or just talk at them or walk them through your contract line by line. We still do contracts. We'll talk about that in a minute. But sometimes the nerves can get the better of us. And having a pitch deck, something that we use on an iPad, has been a game changer. The result, there are no surprises or awkward moments at the consultation. Your process has set you up for success. And then the simple fact that they have already paid, ha, huh, hello, amazing, means you've already eliminated one possible objection while you're at the consultation. You don't have to have that awkward like, okay, so did you get our invoice? Or can you give me a check? Like, ugh, I hate that stuff. A little later, I'm going to walk you through how to talk about your fees in person at the consultation when we review closing the sale. Okay, let's talk about what you do at the consultation. But first, how are we doing so far? Type into the chat, how are we doing so far? I'm taking a sip of water. You can't see me, but that's what I'm doing. Good, loving it, great, awesome. Thumbs up, perfect, okay. Helpful heart. Oh, thanks, Maury. I always love a nice red heart. Uh, can I please show touch point two and three again? Uh, yes, I will briefly show you that slide. Here you go. Do your little screenshot um, or take a picture. All right. Number four. How do you confidently present your services? So now I'm sure that you're wondering, <laughs> But Rebecca, how do I actually run a consultation? What do you do and say? And how do you talk about yourself without sounding Ugh, salesy, right? First, are you running every consultation the same way, using the same formula, the same process from start to finish? Because when this happens, you'll see how much more confident you feel in running the show and presenting your ideas and services. But this is the simple formula that I follow. Listen and assess the project desirability. Then showcase your personality and your skills, who you are. Give them suggestions. For example, oh, I see that your stairs, you know, don't have any carpet on them. Had you ever considered adding a carpet runner to your stairs to dampen noise and help the dog? Or I could really envision a nice big chandelier in this room. How do you feel about light fixtures in the living room? Or have you ever considered wall paneling? I think doing a chair rail here or a beadboard or add in, add in, add in would be phenomenal. You want to show them that you do have ideas and then you want to offer the solution to their problem at the end you sit down and you show them how your service is the solution to their problem. And how I ensure I follow this formula every time is that I use a checklist. I'm not going to walk through this checklist today because you can get it for free on my website. Um, hot tip though, don't rely on technology, please, or the client having Wi-Fi. Just bring a printed version of your checklist to the consultation. It may sound old school, but always have it with you. You have a big job at the consultation. You have to listen, you have to take notes, and you have to offer ideas all at once. I'm gonna remind you, if you can have someone go with you to take notes and follow the checklist, it will ensure nothing gets missed. You'll be able to focus more and not have to multitask as much. You'll look more professional. And without your checklist, you'll have to use your memory and you won't be able to remember everything. Please consider bringing a checklist with you. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to start. Map out a process for your consultations. Try downloading my consultation checklist. Try it, tweak it, and repeat. People still hired me when I started to charge a premium rate, when I bumped my rate up from 450 to 750. And the reality is less people hired me that didn't have the money to engage in my services completely. Yes, I got fewer consultations, but they were more qualified. 
And you just got to try because until you do it, you don't know. Are you guilty of winging it at a consultation <laughs> like I was? I want you to tell me in the comments. And just for a minute, I'll pause here. Winging it can just look like, I've got this. I know what I'm talking about. I know I've done this a million times. I'm just going to show up and I'm going to walk them through this. And da, da, da. And you might be pretty darn good at winging it because I know I was. But there is something about having that paper or having that process that you follow that makes winging it actually more fun. And Martha calls it freestyle. And a lot of us are great and good at that. But what happens is we tend to, when we wing it, we tend to do more of the things we like and less of the things we don't like. And we don't necessarily phrase sales questions in the right way because we're just relying on our natural instinct, which doesn't always cover all the bases. <laughs> okay. It is normal though. Every bit of this journey is about learning and growing. You can do this. I gotcha. So which one are you going to do? One, maybe charge and continue to wing it. Or two, definitely charge or upgrade uh, your, what you're charging and upgrade to a repeatable process that you follow. Tell me in the comments, one or two. One or two. It's a poll. We got a poll going. Yes, we got charge for consultations. I mean, all of you are, most of you anyhow here today are already doing that, which is amazing. Amazing, amazing. Okay. Um, let's move on to number five. So you've listened to your clients. You've talked about their home. You've offered suggestions. Now, what happens next? How do you casually suggest they hire you? How do you ensure you've dropped the hints along the way? What are the deliverables? I get this question a lot. And some of you here today might be wondering that. What do you do? Like, Rebecca, what do you offer as a deliverable? Like, what do you give them at or after the consultation? Do I provide a mood board? Do I offer them a sourcing list? Let's talk about what you need to do to close the sale. The best way to present design fee proposals to the client is to walk them through your process. So walk them through your process, showcasing the client's journey. And I recommend that you use a pitch deck, like I mentioned before, to paint a more visual picture. Walk them through each step of your process. When, when you get to the end of a big milestone, pause and ask them questions like, what questions come to mind so far? Or what the question I just asked all of you, how are we doing so far? Rely on your process to sell itself. Use the consultation pitch deck, share visuals. Inside of those visuals, inside that pitch deck, can you share recent publications that you've, um, and uh, accolades and awards that you have, testimonials from past clients, befores and afters, because most websites don't show those. Deliverables like do you do our reflected ceiling plans, elevations, renderings, mid renovation photos, make it visual. Then walk them through your contract. You don't have to read it line by line. In my opinion, I have tried that way. Uh, I think it's too much when you already have a consultation pitch deck, which sort of summarizes the contract without the legal language. It can be time consuming and it can feel a little tedious, but I do still recommend that you bold any areas that are important in your contract to talk about at the consultation. And then three, set up a circle back call to review the proposal on Zoom. This is something that's relatively new for me and it has been supremely helpful. Throughout the sales process, you want to make sure that you're checking in with them. But sometimes people don't give you real-time feedback. And they don't tell you in the moment because they're just absorbing so much information. It's like at a presentation, right? There's so much and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after the presentation is when you actually get some feedback on revisions because, okay, they've digested it. So that's why you need to set up a circle back call. And you can do it um, before you leave the consultation. I would say let them know that you're going to be sending a proposal, that you're going to be spending some time putting together a design fee proposal for them, and then say, I'd like to schedule a circle back call. How does, for example, 10 a.m. next Thursday look in your calendar? 
send them the proposal then before you get on the call. So that morning, you have no guarantee that they're gonna look at it, but they'll probably still show up for the call even if they're like, oh my gosh, it's so much money. Because after you've spent so much time creating that proposal, if you just send it in an email, you definitely have no idea if they've looked at it. Schedule a circle back call. It doesn't have to be Zoom, but I do recommend it because then you can see your client's reactions. Ask your clients questions periodically. Again, I learned this recently from the sales maven. How are we doing so far? What questions come to mind so far? What's great about these sales questions and techniques is that you aren't being specific. Like, um, do you have any questions? When, whenever someone's asked, do you have any questions? They freeze. Uh, I don't know, should I? I don't know. Uh, and how are you doing so far? They might respond saying, oh, things are really great. It looks like um, we're still gonna stick to our one hour, two hour time zone, which is great, be or time limit, because I have a call at 2.15. Well, that tells him he's pretty conscious of time. If you ask, how are we doing so far? And the client says, oh, great, I really love your process. It's so organized. I can't wait to like learn more. Wow, you know that they really resonated with that aspect. So asking these questions will hopefully get you answers to give you a bit more insight. So definitely screenshot this slide. Okay, I think it's a good place to talk about deliverables. You might be wondering, how much work do you do for them after the consultation? Is the consultation only the allotted time on site or does it include any kind of presentation afterward? Like a mood board, preliminary sourcing, all that jazz, a budget. Basically, what the consultation is, is it's a meeting on site to kickstart your project, get to know each other, find out if you're the right fit and offer solutions on the spot. I do not offer deliverables. It's all about setting expectations. If you have communicated your deliverables before you arrive, like in a discovery call, email, or PDF, then this should be rather easy. At our design firm, we don't offer deliverables other than a proposal. So the consultation is strictly for us to discover the scope, offer insights on the spot, and determine if the project is a good fit for both parties. It's like a first date. We don't yet know if we want to go steady, and that works both ways. You don't need deliverables to be valuable. I'm going to say that again. You do not need deliverables to be valuable. Stop overcompensating for a lack of confidence. Sorry, that's tough love, Rebecca, coming out. I know because that has been me. And I will admit that it is still me from time to time. I want to remind you that you can do it. Lean on your process to pitch your services. Your process is going to sell you so that you don't have to sell yourself. Would you like me to create a process like this for all touch points in your business, not just the consultation, so that you can run every project with confidence? The way I see it, you have two choices if you're looking to create process and elevate your offering. Number one, you could create your process alone and stumble through it and hunt and peck all over Google because the answers are there, hoping that you're learning from someone who's actually getting results, or we can do it together. And I can guide you step by step through the process so you don't have to guess or stumble your way through it. And if so, I want to invite you into Power of Process. Power of Process is the only implementation program of its kind that shows you exactly how to create and implement a unique process like a pro and use that process to elevate your clientele and free up your time. By the end of this program, you will have outlined the steps of your process like a pro, created internal checklists for each step, expertly built a client journey that will wow, developed a client onboarding strategy, connected with other like-minded designers, leveraged a mix of marketing tactics to spread the word about your new improved way of doing business, and created a vision or cast a vision for the business of your dreams. But above all else, POP, as we affectionately call it, will give you the confidence to up-level your business and eliminate the chaos of running from project to project. The course is made up of five modules delivered over six weeks. It starts with pre-course pre work that's available as soon as you join. So that's casting your vision and clarifying your strengths. 
Module one is defining your ideal client. Module two is the process planning framework. Module three, the art of outlining your internal process where you create all of your steps. Module four is developing your unique client journey. And then module five is all about promoting and implementing your process. So what's included inside the course? You get recorded lessons and training delivered over six weeks, starting next week, <laughs> weekly study hall sessions via Zoom with replay access in your members area, weekly worksheets, exercises for you to implement your learnings, access to our POP online shop. Most people don't know we have this, but we sell things like my design services contract. We sell all my own internal checklists. We sell our onboarding, um, all of our Canva documents. They're all inside the POP online shop with exclusive, that's exclusively available to POP students and a supportive and private community of other designers with a members only Facebook group as well as weekly live Q&A sessions with me. So there's a total value for all of the five modules of $2,495. But you also get some sweet bonuses. One of them is a limited edition private podcast that is exclusively for POP members. That is valued at $587. If you know my podcast, you know I give away a ton of information for free. Imagine what you would get inside the private podcast. So it's not only new, never before told real life stories, you can take power of process on the go. So you'll be able to listen to the lessons wherever you are, driving your car, going for a walk, without having to be seated at a computer. So it'll be wherever you get your podcast, iTunes or Google or wherever, and you will get to listen to the candid conversations with POP alumni, my very own employees, motivating stories, meditations, money mindset work, and so much more, as well as all of the lessons on the go. Let me just remind you that I am not extra special. I don't have access to these exclusive experts or resources. I've really just figured it out throughout the years of running my business and I've established a proven process that I follow every time. And I just share that with you. So if I can do it, I know you can too. The other bonus that you get inside Power of Process is called Tools of the Trade. For some reason, this bonus is like one of our most popular. Um, I don't know, I say for some reason because it just always surprises me uh, how much we take for granted the things that we do every day and that other people are just so hungry for that knowledge because Tools of the Trade is a recorded training. We're updating it this year, so it's completely new and improved. And it is a value of $875 probably should be valued at more, but it is a where I walk you through key programs available to help you document and follow your process. I review the pros and cons of each program. I share exact tools that I use in my business and answer any questions you have about what would be the right fit for you. I will add that you can try the course and if you join and you aren't satisfied, all you need to do is show me your completed strategy sheets within 14 days of enrolling and I will refund you your money. The third bonus that's included is brand new. So this one I've never done before. It's going to be a live 90 minute training. It is project management for interior designers using Asana. So it's how to use, it's how to use Asana in your business. And I'll share what that means in a sec. Uh, the value of that is $697. The project management with Asana, it's how we keep our projects on, tra on track. It's a simple to use system, it's free. And it's the system that we've developed over the last six years using Asana in my own business to manage projects from start to finish. So I will cover things like using Asana to manage new leads and the onboarding process, how to track project progress in design and decorating and construction, managing project deliverables, working with team members on a project, how you can create templated projects with your process so that with every new project, you just copy and go. You never will miss a step or a task again. And I'll show you how we use it with our checklists. The fourth bonus that you get is with Charlotte uh, Isaac. Charlotte Isaac is this incredible, I think she's Aussie or Kiwi. I hate that I'm, I'm getting them confused. I'm so short, sorry, Charlotte. 
but she's incredible. And she has a bonus recorded training called automating your client experience using Dubsado. And she walks you through how you can use Dubsado, which is a program that I have used in my own business to make the client facing side of your business so much smoother. She in her own business helps overwhelmed and overworked entrepreneurs build customized solutions so that they can serve their clients better. And she shows you how you can automate some of the busy work and feel a lot more confident in running your design business. It's a 45 minute training. It has tangible elements of a great client experience. She talks about Dubsado and what it can do for you. The three processes that you can automate using Dubsado to free up your time. And it's a really incredible bonus. It's the second time we've had that bonus. So as you can see, you get the complete power process training program valued at $24.95. Bonus one, exclusive private podcast valued at $587. Bonus two, tools of the trade recorded training valued at $875. Bonus number three, which is our brand new live training project management with Asana valued at $697. And bonus number four, which is automating your client experience training using Dubsado. And that is a value of $5,230. Plus, in addition to the core bonuses and the complete program, you get live study hall sessions. This might be my favorite. Live study hall sessions are weekly Zoom calls that you can hop on with your fellow PO peers every Tuesday for six weeks to keep moving forward. The live session is an opportunity for you to connect with the other designers in the program, to ask questions of my team. There are often ambassadors, so POP alumni that co-host these Zoom calls, and you will get help and support for whatever you need. This is where we see some incredible connections form, and the value of the study halls is $1,200. So you get the complete training program, those four core bonuses, the live study hall sessions, and a private community. So the private community is a private members-only Facebook group for community and accountability with six weeks of live Q&A sessions with yours truly every Thursday for the duration of the course. And the value of that is $1,450. So you get the training, the bonuses, study halls, private community, and lifetime access. This is something that I think is extremely priceless. As a POP member, you'll have access to future course updates and live sessions without having to enroll again, which is why you see so many POP alumni coming through the course again, which I love because they add so much value. They are there with you, supporting you in the Facebook group, answering your questions, sharing what they've done and what they've implemented in the last year since they took the course or the last six months. And it is such an incredible value. Many people told me not to do this, they said, this is silly. You're leaving money on the table. You should at least charge people a little bit to come back next time and join the Zoom calls or charge them for the Facebook group. And I said, no. I said, I want to build a community. And so when you sign up, you do get lifetime access. So you get all of these things, the program the bonuses, the study halls, the private community, the lifetime access for a total value of $7,880. So right about now you're thinking, okay, Rebecca, give us the price. You're not going to actually charge us $8,000, are you? The truth is I could probably charge at least $4,500. I know other similar programs out there for sale right now that are charging even more than that. But to be honest, I believe this program is better than the ones on the market. I do believe that like this is generally like I've heard that actually from students who've taken other people's programs and then come and take in this one and said they this one was far greater value for money. But I know that even at $3,500, that would be a lot, especially given the time that we're living in, right? And I know my community well, and I want you to get results and I want people to sign up and I want people to join our community. I want designers to be in our community. So even though my industry colleague said for sure, you could raise the price to 3,500, I knew that was going to be tough for you. So I cut it in half. I want designers and decorators to be able to jump right in without hesitation, knowing that you're getting loads of value at an affordable price. And I want you to be my next testimonial. So you can enroll today for $16.97 or 
we've added seven monthly payments of 297 because we know sometimes cash flow can be challenging. And so we've made it a very bite-sized payment plan for those of you who feel like, oof, I'm not quite ready to commit to the under just under $2,000. To enroll, you can click the let's do this button. There should be a button um, that Vera is going to pop onto the screen right there. Uh, or you can go to rebeccahay.com forward slash yes to sign up. Okay. Woohoo. This is good. I mentioned a special bonus at the beginning of our masterclass, and this is a bonus that we are just announcing today to the public. It'll be available for 24 hours. So don't wait. If you sign up today in this masterclass, you will get, in addition to all the bonuses that we're already offering, our customizable consultation pitch deck Canva template. Don't wait. You want to grab this. We've never offered this before. Okay, here's what you're going to overcome. Fear of selling your design services because you don't feel professional. The fear of not knowing what to do or how to do it. So many years I spent thinking there's got to be a better way, but where is it? What is it? I got it. The feeling of being pulled in multiple directions. Oh, do I call the contractor? I got to go pick up that fabric. Oh, I haven't invoiced in a few days. Oh my gosh. These are just scenarios that I've gone through. I imagine others have experienced too. And you can overcome that fear of not being able to service your clients at the level that you want and you know that they expect. In a minute, we're going to move into our Q&A session. So if you are one of the first 10, no, sorry, not first 10. If you enroll in the course before we end here today, you don't have to be the first 10. You can be anyone as long as you enroll in the course today, you will get a um, you are going to get access to that super special bonus, which is our consultation pitch deck template in Canva. So if you're ready to get started, click the let's do this button or go to rebeccahay.com forward slash yes. Okay, let's do a quick review of the details before we dive into our Q&A. So when you do go to rebeccahay.com forward slash yes, you will land on this page where you can click, I need a process, click on that to um, bring you to the payment options. Pick the one, as you can see, there are two options. Choose the one that works best for you. And then you will be prompted with Shopify to add to cart. So we do have other courses available, one other course at the moment. Uh, so make sure you're adding the right course to your cart and you wanna hit buy, fill out your contact information. You're gonna be prompted to fill out the details and your credit card and uh, anything that you need. So you're gonna fill that out. Then you want to view your cart and fill in the details. So make sure if you want the payment plan option, you click that little blue button down below there that says, I can't even read it, so small on my screen, uh, seven month or whatever month payment plan. That's where you would click that and then fill out your details. And that's it. Cue the confetti. Once you sign up, you're going to get this note. You're in. You're officially enrolled in Power of Process. Woo -woo. And then you'll immediately receive three emails. <laughs> it seems like a lot, but I want to make sure you don't miss them because they can sometimes go to your spam. So you want to go and see there is a welcome and login, one that tells you that you um, can access the course, and then one that is your confirmation and your order, which is your receipt of payment. And then you will also receive access to the podcast. It is a private podcast that will only work with your email. So it's not something that is shareable. It's only for those of you inside the course. You will get an email via Hello Audio prompting you. There are already episodes sitting in that private podcast waiting for you. I just got a DM from someone today saying, oh my God, the episode on your money mindset was like mind blowing. It was so good. Uh, so you'll want to definitely dive into that right away today. And this is how it's going to look. You're going to accept the invite to subscribe to the private podcast, add it wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. And you want to create an account and log into your portal. This is a portable, portable, portable. We use Teachable, not portable. We use Teachable as our platform, and that's where you'll see it. Watch the welcome video. I will walk you through what's coming and dive into the pre-course work. We are having opening ceremonies this Friday, March 31st. So please mark your calendars. You'll be able to add all of the calendar events to your calendar. And then module one will drop next Monday, April 3rd. 
As soon as you enroll, you also get immediate access to the private members only Facebook group where you'll be welcomed in by over 200 past Power Process students, myself and Vera, and you can immediately start to consume content inside that Facebook group, introduce yourself and get to know our crew. So as a reminder, you can get started today, pick the payment that works for you, click the let's do this button or go to RebeccaHay.com forward slash yes. So let's just have a little recap of why you're here. You showed up today, even though you're incredibly busy for a specific reason, you feel stuck. Your business is not making enough money, but you know, there's got to be a better way. You see other people doing it. You're tired. Maybe, maybe you're running from project to project with little control of your own time. You want to stop letting your clients run the show, or maybe you're motivated. You're ready to elevate your brand and attract projects that fuel your creativity and pay you what you're worth. But you might have doubts. You might say, I want to create my own process, but so before we get into the Q and a, and we're going to head there in just a minute. So get your questions ready to go before we get there. I know that you might be thinking some of these things. I'm overwhelmed. There just isn't enough fricking time, Rebecca. This might be something you're thinking. I'm overwhelmed, right? I want to remind you, I get it. That's part of why we have lifetime access. You can go at your own pace. There is no rush whatsoever. In fact, one of our star POP alumni, Jamie Sparling, signed up for the course in 2021, didn't attend a single live session. I don't even know if she logged into her portal because she was way too busy, but she knew she didn't want to wait another six to eight months to do the course. And she scheduled time over Christmas holidays where she just binged the course. She did it in her own time, got incredible results, and then joined the rest of our community. So take it at your own pace. You might be thinking, I don't know where to start. Like, I feel like I'm always overcomplicating things. Is this the right place to start? I don't know. I get it. I got you covered. When you join Power of Process, there is a step-by-step -step guide. I also do not release the entire course all at once for this reason. If it feels overwhelming to you and you're nervous about having the time and you don't know when you're going to fit it in to do it, you can just go step-by-step. Truthful, truthfully, that's my specialty. Don't worry about overcomplicating it because I'm not going to let you. We drip, we call it dripping, air quotes, modules once a week. And there is a one week break called implementation week, which we didn't even really talk about, but there is a one week break. So you can kind of catch up and consume the content, still show up for the live calls so that you can't get ahead of yourself. Some people don't like that about the course. They just want to do it all at once, but I'm sorry. That's not how it's set up. You also might be thinking that every project and client is different. This was me. I used to, oh my God, I used to believe this. I could not imagine following the same process for everyone. Like hands up in the chat. If you get that, you're like, yeah, but like designing Judy's kitchen is absolutely not the same as the new build. And it's certainly not the same as decorating all those little girls rooms. I know it's not the same project but you could still run them following the same process every single time. I used to believe this too, until I tried it. And you'll be in a community of designers who share their wins to encourage you along the way. Oh, I want to take a pause. Vera's noted me that notified me that we've welcomed some new members. Woohoo! Welcome Natalie and welcome Faye. I'm so excited to have you. Okay. We're good. For the next 20 minutes, I'm going to turn on my camera, actually. Give me a second here so I can turn on my camera. Um, do, do, do. There we are. Okay, I'm going to turn on my camera. Hello. Um, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to answer your questions. So as long as we're still here live uh, and you enroll in the program, you're also going to get that uh, special bonus, the consultation pitch deck that I told you about. And so I want you to type your questions into the chat. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Oh, okay. Here we are. Okay, now I got to find my chat. <laughs> give, me, give me a second here. I'm sorry about the glasses. I know they're reflecting the light, but the last time I did this, I got a migraine because I, I have 42-year-old eyes, guys. 
I need glasses now. Okay, so questions, you can uh, send them directly or put them in the chat. Okay, so one of the questions that came through, I just want to start here because one of the questions that came through, and it can be about anything, it can be about consultations, it can be about uh, power of process, it can be about business. Um, oh, what is the fast action bonus again? It is the consultation pitch deck. So that is the Canva template. I don't have my iPad here right now, but it's what I pop up on my iPad to in a consultation at the end to show clients uh, how we work. And I walk them through our seven steps and how it's calculated. And I get them visually excited about our process. Um, and so one of the questions we got was that somebody said that they're really interested in enjoying power of process, um, but they wanted to know if the course would ex would it would benefit an existing um, business that already has a process. Someone who's just looking for a fresh vibe. You're already established, maybe a few years, more than a few years in. Is it is it beneficial? The answer to that is yes. We have had several designers inside Power of Process who have more than 20 years experience individually in the industry. And the reason that they said that they um, that they signed up, because I remember they signed up and I was like, oh, well, like Colleen, Laura, like there's all these, Jane, like, why are you taking this course? Like, you, it seems like you got it figured out. And they were like, honestly, I feel like I live in a silo. I feel like I'm working maybe not live, but I feel like I work in the silo and I, and I don't get to bounce ideas off of other designers. I don't have designer friends. And honestly, a couple of them said, we're just super curious how other people in the industry are doing things. And we know that Rebecca, your community is so open to sharing and so great at collaborating. We just know there's so much value. And a lot of those, those POP members that have been in business for a long time, had major ahas, tweaked some things in small ways, uh, adopted other things in big ways. So I think there's a ton of value, even if you have been in business for a while. Um, now on the flip side of that, because I do get questions about, is this for me? I'm just, um, I'm just starting out or I just finished school. I would say, oh my God, dive right in. Like, honestly, if I had something like this, when I was starting my business, I can't even tell you, I feel like I would be in another, like another level now because not only did I not have access to other people in the industry, I certainly did not have access to people that were further along than me in the industry. Like that is, I think, a huge benefit to joining our community is that you get to be in community and supported by designers who have been doing this a while, who have some trial and error, and you can ask them. It's not just like asking your other design friend who's just finished school. We have had designers sign up for this program that hadn't even started their business yet. Like Shirley Engel is a great example. Shirley Engel was a news reporter in Ottawa, Ontario, and she wanted to start a design business. And she basically, before even launching her website, took our course just this last, past fall, I think it was, and developed a process. She didn't know anything. It was her second career in her late 40s. Like this is, she didn't know anything about running a design business. And she used Power of Process as her launch pad and her support network in order to get the business up and running. Um, okay, Shay says, I'm not able to look at POP for about a month or more go on the live calls, but if I sign up and I'm doing it much slower than others, would I feel behind on the live calls, et cetera? Okay, this is a really great question, Shay. Thank you for asking it. Absolutely not. Like you will not feel behind because A, I always say there is no such thing as behind in power of process, but B, the live calls are not necessarily tailored to the content of that week. Um, as much as we encourage designers to to ask questions and talk about it, and that that is where we we hope the conversation will go. Sometimes we want to make sure we're giving all that extra value. Oftentimes, like things just go sideways in the in the study hall, and like, Vera can attest to that because she's often the one guiding the study hall, and it's literally somebody has a situation, and how would you handle this situation? And it the calls you do not need to do the work to attend the study halls. And I'll give you an example. So we had a designer for the, the very first time that we did the course, I think it was Colleen, I think. She, um, she admitted 
months later, like she literally finished Power of Process. Then she joined us inside Designer's Room, which is my um, my annual membership for anyone who's taken POP, you're welcome to join us. But it wasn't until then, in one of our Zoom calls with the members that she said, I have a, I have a confession to make. <laughs> I, never, I never watched the lessons. I just showed up to the live calls. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like you've made so many amazing changes in your business just from attending the live calls. So she is proof is in the pudding that you, you almost just, you absorb by, what is it? You learn by osmosis, you absorb, like you just absorb the information from just being present in the calls and not even, you don't even need to necessarily um, be active and offer information and ask questions and talk in the calls, like just being a fly on the wall, you learn so much. So I hope that answers your question, Shay, about, um, about that. On the flip side, I do want to also let you know that if you feel like the time commitment to attend all these live sessions is way too much, then what I would say is the stuff, don't, don't sweat it. Like you don't have to show up to the live calls either they are all recorded and they are all saved in your portal. So you can watch them at your own time. Um, I would I would recommend you, if you're feeling like it's overwhelming and you won't be able to commit to showing up to the live Q and A's and the study halls, treat them almost like office hours. Like they're there if you need them. If you've got a burning question and you wanna pop in, great, but by no means do you have to attend the live sessions to get value from the course. Um, I hope that answers. <clears throat> um, Aaron says, step four in the consultation money combo. You mentioned walking through your process and fee structure along with your pitch deck. Is your pitch deck essentially your portfolio? As a new designer who has a fairly light portfolio, how would you then approach this step in the consultation? Okay, Aaron, this is a great question. I think this is a question about not having a ton of work under your belt. Uh, which is a really great question to ask because nobody does when they're starting. I didn't. So the, the consultation pitch deck, first of all, that is the bonus that you will get when you sign up today. So if you sign up today, you will get access to that Canva template. So you'll see exactly what we suggest and how we do it. But I would say it's not just my portfolio. And in fact, I don't actually share a ton of portfolio images in the pitch deck. I have some stock photography right? Like no different than this, um, this slideshow today, there was some project photography, there was some stock photography. I just make it look visually pleasing. There's some pictures of me, uh, you could like one of me in like a construction hard hat. I mean, you could, you could pull a picture of a construction site without you being in it online. Like there's lots of ways to get creative. I do think it's powerful if you have a portfolio to showcase before and after. Um, but by no means. And if anything, I reserve, like, I'm not going to waste time in my consultation saying like, look at me, look at all the pretty spaces I've done because chances are they've already seen my work either on my website or my Instagram. So I don't, I try not to load it up too much. It's more about the transformation that I've done for past clients and the deliverables. So if you don't have anything in your portfolio, I wouldn't be too worried about it. I would say, okay, find some pictures. Can you take pictures? Can you take some little style shots around your, around your house? Or can you offer to style a showroom and take pictures, like get creative, but really show them, okay, here's an example of a floor plan. Here's an example of a presentation table. And if you haven't done a presentation, lay it all out, make it look like a presentation. Like these are the things that you need to do sometimes when you're starting out to, until you've built up that portfolio. Aaron, I hope that's helpful. I'm just going to take a sip of water before I answer the next question. Maury, uh, Maury says, do you offer meeting notes as part of post consultation follow-up? Do you have your assistant take pictures and measurements during your consultation visit, or is that a follow-up visit once they hire you? Okay. Great question, Maury. Um, okay. There's multiple questions. So let's, I'm going to tackle the first question first. Do I offer meeting notes? So I don't call them meeting notes, but I do include with my proposal, the scope of work, which is essentially the consultation summary. And it is a, a breakdown of all the areas that we discussed us helping with 
So it might be living room, um, layout, decorating, um, consider including sectional sofa, but it's not verbatim everything that we've talked about, because let's be honest, that's like almost impossible to do when you're trying to be there present, even with an assistant, because this isn't going to miss something. I used to try and do that. And it just, it, it just, there was always something missing. And so instead of being trying to be so specific, it is an overview of what we talked about, but we treat it as the scope of work. Uh, your next question, question was, does your assistant take pictures and measurements? So Yes, we take a few overall photos. So, and this is something that I think is in my consultation checklist. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, Maury, go get it. It's free. It's on my website on RebeccaHay.com. But it is, um, we do take pictures once we've done the whole walkthrough and we get a sense of the space, we've offered ideas. We take a pause to regroup before sitting down to look at the pitch deck. And in that pause, the assistant and I, or just the assistant, will I get to chitter chatter about going skiing on the weekends to build that rapport with the client. Um, the assistant will take pictures and do overall measurements. I do not, there's no way a consultation will be enough time to measure someone's space. Even just a one room. Don't do that. Don't do it until you know you've been hired. So what we do is we measure overall so that I know the square footage and I use the square footage to help me with my proposal fee calculation. And that is definitely something that we talk about inside power of process, like that whole, my process, fancy that I share my process inside power of process. Um, and so that the, there is a follow-up visit once they hire me exactly Maury, and that is called trade day. And I walk into, I walk you guys through what trade day is inside power process, but essentially that's where we meet with any relevant trades. We might, if it's a big house, I might even hire an external company to come do the measure, but that is, um, that's how we do that. So hopefully that, uh, answers your question. Finish answering. Okay. Uh, this is cool. I can like click answer live and finish answering. Abby says, do you have tips for feeling a lack of ability to take on a client, no matter how small? Do you have tips on feeling a lack of ability to take on a client, no matter how small? I guess overcoming a level of burnout, gaining momentum and passion and confidence. Abby, I would love a little bit of clarification on your question. Um, do you just mean like, you feel like you can't take on any new projects, no matter the size, because you're burnt out? burnt out. Um, if you can just clarify, that would be really helpful. I'd love to know a little bit more about your question. Um, because I think that, oh, Mari says, yes. Okay. So, well, burnout is like a whole other thing. And that comes from taking on too much, trying to do too much with our time and never taking time for ourselves. And that's why I mean, that's why I feel so strongly about process because it wasn't until we got our process like on, I'm like wanting to reach for something. There's gotta be something. Where is there something like on paper, right? There wasn't until we got it on paper that, and I started doing those steps and, and running my business the way that I run it, that I was able to have more time for my thoughts, for me. And like my life today versus what it was like even three years ago, like, shoot, go watch my YouTube channel. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. I haven't posted in it in like a couple of years. Like see the chaos, the crazy, the running around. I never took a moment for myself. I was taking on every single freaking project and the burnout was real. The getting sick was real. I mean, I have little kids, so I get sick all the time still, but it was something that once I was able to establish a set way of running projects, I was able to hand off some tasks and delegate, which was really, really powerful and helpful. Um, but I really believe that you don't, you shouldn't have to take on every project that comes your way because at some point doing a million little projects isn't going to make you a ton of money. It's just going to burn you out. So I think it's about finding that balance. And, and I talk a lot about, understanding what your goals are and what size of projects are reasonable for you and desirable for you. And how many of those do you need in a year? 
so that you can kind of strategically plan how many consultations you need to get there without feeling that you need to take on everything. And Abby says, yes, I think it goes with imposter syndrome. Absolutely. I would say that imposter syndrome definitely plays into that. It also plays into this, I think, human um, need to, to be validated that we're doing a good job. And so somebody comes to us and I can only speak from my own experiences. And I've struggled a lot with this in the past is like, but they've come to me. Oh my God, they value me. They want me. I don't want to turn that project down because I don't feel like I'm good enough for like the next bigger project. And so I think that possibly to your point, Abby, that that imposter syndrome could show up there too, where you're not feeling like you're good enough for the next ones. So you keep taking on the small projects. So there's a lot of mindset work probably at play there. I hope that helps. Um, Megan has a question. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. I am currently working at full service design firm and absolutely love working with the team, but I'm thinking about doing virtual design on the side. Will your program be helpful if I'm doing online services and not full service or in-person design? Oh, this is such a great question. Actually, you're not like the second person to ask me this question this week. Um, oh, that's, that's a lot to take on. Good for you. I mean, I don't, I, this course is not a, how to set up an online um, design service, like e-design. I don't teach you explicitly how to set that up with programs. However, this course, and I say this all the time, and any of my POP alumni would tell you the same thing, that the course is really beneficial to any creative entrepreneur. So to anyone establishing a business or who is running a creative-based business, because every creative-based business has to deal with mindset and has to deal with how do I get things organized so that I can be my most creative self. Every business, in my opinion, first of all, read the e-myth, which was like a huge starting point for me in, in getting process set up. The e-myth by Michael Gerber is one of my book recommendations on my book list that I share with my students, but it is every business needs a process. So if it's e-design, you still need a set process. What comes first, then what happens? How do you price that? Who is your client? Those are the fundamentals to establishing a business. And that's what I walk you through inside Power of Process. I think you would find as well, Megan, inside our community that there are a lot of designers who have offered e-design or online design services in the past or in, in the present that you might be able to pick brains of. I know for a fact we have designers in our group who have either parted ways with their previous employer or are still working with an employer. Um, and, you know, for privacy, I would never say who they are, but there are people that take this course with the intention of eventually going out on their own. So 100%, there's a ton of value there, but I, I'm not going to pretend that this is meant to teach you how to set up an online um, design business because it's not. It is business foundation for a service-based business. Okay. Um, while we're here, I'm just going to hop on over to one second. I want to share. Oh, you can see this the same size. Isn't that interesting? Okay. <laughs> interesting. Um, I want to just hop on over to another slide. I don't know if you guys can see this. You can see this. Okay. I just want to, to, to bounce back in here, uh, just to talk about process for a second about the transformation that can take place when you take a leap of faith and you invest in yourself and your business. Uh, this is Jocelyn. This is Jocelyn's story. She, um, I don't know, it looks grayed out for me. I don't know if it's, why is there, I'm good. Okay. That's just for me. Um, these are DMs that she sent me after she signed up for Power of Process. And Jocelyn is an incredible story because she started off by charging, I think, $50 for a consultation. Uh, she now charges upwards of $500. She, in the time of taking the course, made such incredible leaps and bounds that she even opened her own studio. So she got a studio outside of the house. She's also a mother of five boys under the age of seven, I want to say, or under the age of eight. Uh, so very busy mom with a busy life. I guess they do say if you want something done, give it to a busy person. Um, she changed her pricing model based on my pricing model that I share inside Pricing with Confidence, but she changed the pricing model and immediately started capturing 
more revenue than she'd ever done before. Every little bit of insider info, as she calls it, that we provide inside Power of Process, she literally took it and with stride, little by little, did the work. Because this is the thing about a course like this. There's so much knowledge and there's so much information, but if you don't pause to do the work, to implement, then you're not going to get those big transformations. And I want you to be my next transformation story. Like I'm looking, who's going to be the next Jocelyn? Who can I help? Who can I catapult into the next realm? I ended up meeting Jocelyn at High Point Market last fall. She had never been. It was just amazing to see where she's taken her business. She continually returns. She's in our designers member designers room community. Um, and I just want to remind you that when you dive in today, you can immediately start doing the work. Um, let me go back here to this other one. I know I've got questions. Um, oh, welcome Megan. Woo -woo. Oh guys, for all the, all the newbies that joined today, you're in <laughs> cue the confetti legitimate confetti that i will sweep up later amazing welcome so so welcome um i want to remind you as well while you're here that when you sign up i mentioned briefly earlier that there's an online shop so you will get access to our exclusive online shop this is something we're continuing to add resources to and the reason it is only available exclusively for pop uh members or students is because I think you need to take the course first. I don't know. I just, it's the teacher in me that's like, there are building blocks. And so, and I love, this is such a funny thing about doing these courses is I've learned so much about myself and how much I really love curriculum, which is probably why I like process. Like I really like, there's a structure and a way to doing things. And there's a way, there's a reason I teach module one first, and then I teach module two. There is a reason that my programs are known for being so well organized. We actually have, Betty Sintikitas was in, um, she's amazing. She's in our, she's a POP and a designer's room uh, member. And she actually came, her corporate gig was doing like online education, like educational resources. And she says to me all the time, like your courses are so well structured. They're not like any other courses out there. You make it bite-sized, easy to learn and easy to implement. And so because I want you to do, I want you to go from A to Z or Z if you're Canadian. Um, and then you can, from there, okay, let's get you um, set up with the checklists. Then why don't we tackle marketing and, and look at the photography and publishing workshop. Um, then you can do the onboarding, purchase my onboarding bundle. Like these are all things that are available for purchase. Um, that are affordable, that are attainable, that are super valuable. You can get our design services contract. And then of course, after, which I haven't even really mentioned, you will be invited to join designer's room, whether or not you complete the course. We have people who join designer's room who didn't actually attend power of process. They would show up for a live study hall, maybe do a little here and there. They just wanted to keep the momentum going. So they joined designer's room. And that's something that you'll hear about a little bit later once you um, go through the course. Okay. There are still so many of you here. And so I would love to know, why are you on the fence? If you are still here, then there's something burning. There's some question. So please just go ahead, type into the chat, I'm on the fence because, and I will respond to each and every one of you. So go ahead, type that in right now. I see you, I see you there. And while I'm waiting for you to bear your soul and type into the chat why you're on the fence, I'm gonna answer a couple other questions that came through and these may be questions that you have, but you're too afraid to ask so I'm gonna share it. Um, but actually this is not an afraid one, but the Tuesday live Zoom links or the Tuesday live study hall session, somebody asked what time they are. They are every Tuesday at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, okay, 
Um, I'm so happy I discovered you. This is a question that came in uh, recently. Much like your own experience, I'm a new mom and started my own design business. How often do you run the POP program if I cannot join this time around? This is a good question because we currently offer it two times a year. So last year we did it spring and fall. And then in 2021, we only did it once. This year, our plan is to do it again in the fall. However, I have been toying with, because it's a lot, it's a lot um, for our team because we're just like, we, we're there, we're, we're with you. Like it's up six weeks and then the lead up to it and then going into designer's room and I want to be there for my designer's room community. I have toyed with maybe doing it once a year. I don't know if that's going to be this year. All that to say that there is no guarantee. And I, I see there's a question, Shay saying, I'm away traveling for this power of process. When is the next one? It might be in September. If we do it again this year, it will be in September. It will not be in the summer, summer months. Um, but I can't tell you with 100% certainty that that is the plan. Uh, but that's how it's been going. Shay says, I'm on the fence because I truly don't know when I'll have the time to attack it. It could be months away and I want to take it seriously. Shay, I appreciate your honesty. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you are not alone. I'm sure there are many other people feeling that way. I have had that. So let me tell you a story. So there is this incredible mentor of mine, um, Amy Porterfield, and I've followed her for a long time and she teaches about how to launch an online course like I do here. And I've followed her and Veer and I, we've taken her, a lot of her teachings and she has a course called DCA Digital Course Academy. And I was like, oh, I really want to take it, but it was expensive. And so it was like 2021. I'm like, I really want to take it. Oh, no, it was like 2020. And I was like, no, I'm not going to invest the money. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it myself. So we started, we did it ourselves. Then the next year it came around again because she does it once a year. I'm like, oh, I don't want to miss it. But at the same time, I'm not, I don't know if I'm not going to have the time to do it. I'm not going to do it. Another year comes and goes. <clears throat> Last year, I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to buy the course. And I'm going to do all things. I'm going to dive into all things Amy. And the very, as soon as I did it and I dove into the course material and I showed up in her Facebook group and I was like, felt so supported. And every time I had a question about anything, I would just type it and get an answer. I turned to Vera and was like, oh my God, we should have done this three years ago imagine how much better we would be at creating courses, at delivering communities, how much I wished I had bitten the bullet and done it. Now, that was my experience. So I can only share from my experience, um, Shay, because I, I, can, I can appreciate all this to say that I understand where you're coming from. And I understand that feeling of like, I want to be able to like give it my all. It is your call if you have the time to do it. I will just remind you, progress over perfection. Even when I finally dove into taking that course, I really got really excited at first and then business and life got in the way. And I'm still, I still haven't completed all the modules, but I don't regret for a second the pennies that I spent on that course because, or dollars or thousands of dollars that I spent on the course because the value that I got, even just from the bits that I was able to consume, was able to take us and give us techniques and tactics that I would never have thought on my thought of on my own. So you have to listen to your instinct and your gut, Shay. I hope that helps you. Thank you for sharing your hesitation. Um, Abby says, is it in my, oh, it is in my it is in my budget for down the road. I know I may need to spend money to make money, but it's not feasible to my family right now. Thank you, Abby. I fully appreciate that. And again, like I'm not in business to, to make anyone go out of business or lose money. Like this is intended to be an investment and I know that it's a healthy investment, but if it's too much for you right now and it's going to mean sacrificing other things in your life, then don't do it. But if you know in your heart of hearts that I know it's pricey, but I feel like it's going to make a change, then I would encourage anyone here to take that leap of faith. 
Lauren says, I have another business which keeps me so busy and slowly getting into design via existing business and wrapping my head around doing this full time. Your content is amazing. I'll get there very soon. Thank you for saying that, Lauren. That's fantastic. That's exciting. I understand having two businesses. I currently have two businesses. I'm running an interior design business and we still have new projects that keep coming in. And I'm running this online business with all of you. And so I understand the juggle. I think at some point you just need to make a decision how you're going to manage both. And that's something that I've had either you need to delegate and bring people on to help with one so you can dive into the other. Um, because I don't know how sustainable it is as one human to be running two businesses. It's not easy. I don't know, Lauren, if your plan is to transition into design. Uh, if it is, I would love to be there to support you. That would be really exciting. Brenna says, I'm on the fence because of the investment. I love what you are offering, but I'm also a professional musician. Midway through a decorating program in college, about to get married. Oh, that's so exciting. And I'm finally on the brink of clearing my long-term student debt from all of my music degrees. It shouldn't feel like a huge price tag, but it does. Brenna, thank you for sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being so honest. You we got your back. If now is not the right time, it's not the right time. I'm going to be here. Um, you know, you need to make the right decision for you and your family. And if, if you are still pursuing music while you're also doing the decorating, it's probably pretty challenging. There is a payment plan in place. If that's helpful, it's two ninety seven over seven months. And did we add the flex plan Vera? Okay. We can. Okay. And if, if Brenna reach out to us because there's an opportunity for us to extend the payment plan to be over a longer period of time. So it would be smaller amounts of money, which would mean you could get into the course right away. If that interests you, let us know. And Vera can connect with you because it's something that uh, we do have the capability. We just didn't want to confuse too many people with it. <laughs> um, so if that would be helpful because you want to dive in totally, um, thank you very much for sharing. Okay. Where are we? I'm losing my, okay. You guys are amazing. You guys are so, so amazing. Uh, I'm really excited that so many of you today have joined us inside power of process. You know, it's not going away till Friday. So you still have time to make your decision. If you want that bonus, the consultation pitch deck that I talked about, then you want to sign up today. We're going to be announcing that to the public on Instagram, and that'll be for 24 hours only that you can get that. If you sign up after the 24 hour period, you do not get access. We might make it available for purchase, but we haven't made that decision yet. Um, so it is today. And Friday, we close the doors at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm just going to check something out here. We have a welcome ceremony. So it's like an opening ceremonies to invite all of our new students and there'll be past students there as well. And I believe that's at one o'clock. Is that right, Vera? One o'clock? Never mind. It's at 12 o'clock. Right. So you're going to want to join before 12 o'clock, even though the doors don't close till one, because then you can join us inside our welcoming ceremonies. And it's going to be really fun. Um, and I think I've covered everything. Unless anyone has any last questions, I'll stay on for a few more minutes. I know we've gone way over time, but I'm just happy to be here to support you to answer your questions. How many of you are committed to making change this year, whether or not you signed up for Power of Process? Because we aren't even at the end of the first quarter. Like it's not even at the end. Oh, yay. Shay just joined. Welcome, Shay. Welcome to PLP. Um, okay. And Nicola. Okay. Vera's in the chat there. Amazing. Um, Brenna, Nicola, if you want to talk to Vera about payment plans, we can get you sorted out. Um, who's committed to making a change this year? It's only Q1, guys. Q1 isn't even over. And I think a lot can happen in three quarters of a year. Let's be honest. We still have three quarters left of this year. And yeah, I know it's a weird year. 
Some people are saying, oh, the leads are drying up. Other people are saying, I'm getting all these people coming out of the woodwork. Whatever your situation is, you can make this year great. I believe it. I believe it for my own business, for my own company. And the way to do that is to take a pause. Take a moment for yourself. Really get intentional and strategic with how you want to show up, where you want to be, what do you want your business to look like, and where do you need the support? We are here inside a power of process, ready and excited to support you. So if you do decide to jo join us on this process journey, on this business betterment journey, on this let's make more freaking money journey, then we will see you inside. Don't forget, enrollment closes March 31st. That's this Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will welcome you inside. All right. And if you loved this, please feel free to share on social and say hello to me on Instagram. Okay. Have a great day, everyone.